fans of Taylor Swift must barter, borrow, and beg to get into her performances. 52 performances in huge football stadiums were never going to be enough for Taylor Swift fans to quench their need for seeing the diva play live for the first time since 2018. The majority of the 14 million people who came to Ticketmaster in the hopes of getting tickets were unsuccessful. Millions of Swift fans are still trying to find tickets through Facebook groups, reseller applications like StubHub and SeatGeek, and Twitter matchmaking accounts, and they have had to learn how barter and secondary markets work in the process. Swift will perform three times this weekend at East Rutherford, New Jersey's MetLife Stadium, with some of the least expensive seats starting at almost USON $1,000. In a single weekend, up to a quarter of a million people may fill the 82,500-seat stadium to see her perform. No Milton Friedman textbook has ever been able to compare to the Swift turf for teaching the principles of supply and demand in the real world, similar to Wall Street stockbrokers following a popular IPO. People who had purchased numerous Swift tickets through Ticketmaster, also known as scalpers or capitalists, swiftly found buyers for their possessions. Some fans paid thousands of dollars for tickets that had originally sold for as little as US $49 plus fees, demonstrating that the majority of sellers were successful in recouping their initial investment and turning a healthy profit. That is referred to as demand inelasticity in Economics 101. Demand for a good or service persists despite price increases. In this instance, both post-pandemic carp deem living and pandemic savings are driving forces behind demand. Swift has now performed at half of the era's tour dates, and according to Bloomberg, she is bringing in more than $10 million every show and selling between US $11 million and US $12 million worth of tickets. The creators of Era's Tour Resell, a Twitter account that has more than 150,000 followers and connects buyers and sellers of verified tickets who are prepared to exchange them without making a profit, have first-hand knowledge of demand levels. When they have extra tickets, true fans, they claimed, are ready to forego the markup. The average number of face value tickets available on their page each week is 20 to 30, which is low for a secondary market where scammers and scalpers rule. According to Angel Richards, 27, one of the account administrators located in Connecticut, prospective vendors can receive more than 2,000 responses every message. Demand is extremely, extremely high. Another aspect of Swiftonomics is bartering. One admirer could only obtain tickets after posting a video on TikTok in which she offered to exchange them for the use of her Idaho wedding location, which regularly commands US $4,000 per day. Two tickets might be exchanged for a year's worth of free pizza from another Swifty who runs a pizzeria in Louisiana. According to local media, demand for Swift's performances in her hometown of Philadelphia, where she performed three back-to-back -back shows earlier this month, was so great that thousands of fans, in addition to the 70,000 or so inside the stadium, watched the concert from the parking lot each night. According to the principles of price elasticity of demand, the demand component of the equation is still pretty inelastic. According to Carolyn Sloan, an economist at the University of California, Riverside who teaches rockonomics, a course that makes economic theory relevant to the music industry. There are many persons for whom it seems to be a real necessity. Swifties also teach the U.S. Federal Reserve valuable lessons about consumer resiliency, which it has repeatedly had to take in light of its attempts to slow the economy with 10 consecutive interest rate rises in just over a year. Real consumer expenditure increased by the greatest since the year's beginning in April, according to government data released on Friday. In their quest to control inflation, Fed officials may continue to lean toward rising interest rates because of the robust consumer demand for goods and services and the acceleration of inflation. In November, as the economy began to show early indications of cooling and the likelihood of a recession was rising, tickets for the era's tour first became available. Some Americans are becoming more selective in their purchases as a result of rising costs and tougher credit standards, but many economists are surprised that consumers aren't feeling greater pressure right now. Shannon Siri, an economist at Wells Fargo & Co., said, they've shocked us more times than anyone would care to admit, coming out of the pandemic. In just two post-pandemic years, she said, the spending that occurred over a decade after the Great Recession.